In the same way that Swift UI makes UI development easy, Coromel makes machine learning easy. How? Simple. Once you have a trained model, which we already have, you can get predictions in just two lines of code. Just send in the values you want to work with, coffee, sleep, and wake up time, and then read what comes back. Now in our case, we already made our model right here, betteres1.ml model, hopefully on your desktop right now. If not, you can use my copy of it from GitHub. I want you to drag that into your Xcode project. So show the navigator on the left here, and then drag this file into the project navigator. Just here's fine. Make sure and check the box, copy items if needed, then press finish. Now, when you add an ML model to your Xcode project, like we've done here, it'll automatically make for us a Swift class of the same name as the file name. You can't see the class. You don't need to see the class. It's made automatically by Xcode as part of the build process. However, it does mean your model file is, has, a, has an important file name. Because if it's got a weird name, like mine is better rest space one.ml model, the auto generated class will have the same name. So I recommend you rename it. Rename whatever it's called, rename it to be sleep calculator.ml model. And we can be sure that's a class name because it tells us right here. Model class is called sleep calculator, automatically made by the Swift model. Boom. You'll see this thing knows, it has metadata in place of the author name. It knows it's a tabular regressor with some version stuff down here of who made it and so forth. It understands how wake is a double, estimated sleep's a double, coffee's a double, actual sleep's a double, da da da. It knows the input and output names and types already. They were all encoded right into the model file, which is why it is comparatively so big at 544 bytes for a single mathematical function. So, we're gonna start filling in this calculate bedtime method in just a moment. But before that, we've got to add an import for CoreML because this is outside of SwiftUI. And so scroll up in your file to where it says import SwiftUI. And before that, I want you to add import CoreML. I'm going to hide this uh, left-hand bar we're done now. There we go. Import CoreML, you don't have to put it there, you could put it afterwards, but trust me, alphabetical import is just helpful to check later on. You can see at a glance what's there. Okay, now we can turn to calculate bedtime down here. First, we've got to make an instance of our sleep calculator class like this. I'll start a do block, then say let config be a new ML model configuration, configuration even, there we go and let model be try sleep calculator configuration config. And there is more code to come here. Well then catch any errors, whoops, something went wrong. Okay, this model instance is the thing that reads in all the data we want. Coffee intake, desired sleep, when you want to wake up. And it'll output a prediction. The configuration is there in case you need to enable a handful of what are bluntly some fairly obscure options. Perhaps folks who are professional, working in machine learning full time, AI is the gig, might need these options here. But honestly, I'd guess only one in a thousand folks, if that, actually ever have to change the configuration. Most of us don't worry about it. I do though, want you to think about these do catch block here because using CreatorML or CoreML, sorry, can throw errors in two places. Firstly, one you've seen here, loading the model might fail. It could be an incompatible model. For example, if you use a very new version of CreatorML like in three or four years time with an ancient version of iOS, might have a problem perhaps. However, I can't think that's ever happened, right? It's always worked for me. Similarly, it can throw errors when it makes predictions. I tried to predict it and just totally failed. Again, never seen it happen, but in theory it can. So there's no harm being safe, catch the errors carefully. Anyway, we've trained our model out of a CSV file containing the following fields. Wake, 
when do they want to wake up? This is expressed as a number of seconds from midnight. So 8 a.m. in the morning, a target wake up 8 a.m. will be 8 hours multiplied by 60 multiplied by 60. So that's minutes and then seconds, giving roughly 30,000 or so. It's like 28,800 or something. We also have estimated sleep, roughly how much sleep the user wants to have. Again, stored as values from 4 through 12 in quarter hour increments, which matches our UI here. Then we have coffee, roughly how many cups of top coffee the user drinks per day. And so in order to get a prediction out of our model, we've got to fill in these values. We've got to give them all across the system to work with. We already have two of them. We have sleep amount and we have coffee amount. They're mostly good enough. We're just going to convert coffee to a double. That's what Cratermel, uh, sorry, Coromel works with. Coromel, Coromel. That's what it works with. So Swift's happy. Convert that double, uh, sorry, uh, int into a double. So Swift's happy. Figuring out wake time, though, this is more complex because it's date. And Coromel wants a double. And so we've got to try and convert 8 a.m. into a number of seconds. And this is where Swift's date components come in really useful because it stores all the parts required to represent a date as individual values, meaning that we can read the hour and minute out from there and then ignore the whole rest. We don't care what month, day, year, time zone, era, doesn't matter. 8 a.m. is what we care about, 800. And so with this information, we can get the minute and say multiply by 60 to get seconds. And we get the hours, we multiply that by 60 to get minutes, and multiply that by 60 again to get seconds. Now we can get a day components thing from our date with a very specific call. We say calendar, dot current dot date components and we'll get one back asking for the hour and minute in this case the two bits we care about we can then read those out and remember date components will have everything inside it'll have year month day era time zone duh, 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 but most of them won't be there it'll provide back only the values we asked for not all of them and so the ones we asked for minute and second they'll be provided but they'll be optional because we might not have asked for them, right? So we've got to unwrap them carefully. So very carefully, we're going to say, let components be calendar.current.datecomponents. And we're going to ask for dot hour and dot minute. Give me those two values from our wake up date. So whatever date is in here, whatever year, month, day, time, whatever, whatever is in there, just give me the hour and minute back, please. And now we'll try and read out these values. Now, if we say let hour equals components dot hour, oops, equals even, this here is an optional integer. It may or may not be there because we might not have asked for it. We have, but we might not have done. So we want to nil coalesce that to zero, midnight, no hours, didn't ask for one, fine. Shouldn't happen, we are asking for it, but we're being safe. Then we'll say minute equals components dot minute. Again, nil coalescing to zero. Now remember, we need a value here that is all in seconds. We'll multiply this by 60, and this by 60, and then 60 again. And we can do that using parentheses. So we'll do components our hour nil coalescing zero times 60 times 60. And then components minutes again in parentheses times 60. So we now have the number of hours in seconds and number of minutes in seconds. Again, we have nil coalescing to zero just in case we can't read the hour and minute, but that's never going to happen. So we'll result here, if we choose eight again, we'll have hour eight times 60 times 60 and minute zero times 60 is still zero. Our next step is to feed these values into our core ML model to see what comes out. There's a method for this called prediction. Call this prediction here, which wants wake time, estimated sleep, coffee amount and values and so forth, all as doubles, and we'll get back the result, ideally. So we'll say let prediction be try model.prediction and you can see 
This thing has awake, estimated sleep, and coffee. Now our wake time is going to be hour plus minute as a double. So we'll say double of hour plus minute. That's total seconds from midnight when they want to wake up. Estimated sleep, easy. Sleep amount, or a double. Coffee amount, that's an int. We can make it a double and just pass it on in. Otherwise, fine. And now we have our prediction. It now contains here how much sleep they actually need. This almost certainly was not part of our training data. The exact time and sleep amount and coffee intake was almost certainly not part of our training data. And that's fine. Instead, this was made dynamically using AI by the CoreML algorithm, whatever it decided. However, this thing is, prediction, is a sleep calculator output. It's gonna tell us in here what the actual sleep value is as a double, <laughs> which is not what users want, right? This is not a helpful value for users. It's some number in seconds. What we want to do is convert that into the time they should go to bed, which means subtracting that from the estimated wake up time. You wanna look at 8 a.m., you need eight hours sleep, to subtract it back, you need to go to bed at midnight, whatever it is. Now, thanks to Apple's APIs, it's actually just one line of code to this. You can subtract any value in seconds from a date and get back a new date. So we can say, let sleep time, time equals wake up minus prediction dot actual sleep. And now sleep time will be another date. This is the date they should go to sleep. And now we know exactly when they should go to sleep based on the data they've given us. Our final challenge, for now at least, is to show that to the user. And we're we'll doing this with an alert because you've already learned how to do that and could use the practice, quite frankly. And so we're gonna add some new properties to our content view up here to determine the title of the alert, the message of the alert, and whether or not it's showing. So we'll say at state private var alert title is an empty string. At state private var alert message, empty string. At state private var showing alert is false. And we can immediately use these values down in calculate bedtime, down here. If our calculation goes wrong for any reason, we couldn't load the model, we couldn't do a prediction, we don't care what, it's gone wrong. We'll replace this something that's went wrong comment with alert title equals error. And alert message equals, sorry, there was a problem calculating your bedtime. And then regardless of whether it worked or not, we should show the alert. This might contain the results of their prediction. It might contain the error message. We don't really care. It's still useful, still needs to be shown. So after the do catch block, we'll say showing alert equals true. Now, if the prediction worked correctly, we will have in this sleep time constant, the time they need to go to bed. But it's a date and not a neatly formatted string. So we're gonna pass this thing through the formatted method to make sure it's human readable and then put that into our alert message property. So after making sleep time, we'll go ahead and do this. Alert title equals your ideal bedtime is and then alert message is sleep time dot formatted. Date does not matter, we'll use omitted. And time will do shortened. Give me the short version of this thing here. Now to finish up this stage of the application, we've now got to show this alert somewhere. So that alert title and message are shown when showing alert is true. So we have our title, our toolbar, Below that, add an alert modifier with our alert title. Is presented will be dollar showing alert. Inside there's a single button saying okay with no action code inside it. There is no action, just dismiss. Add a message below saying text of alert message. Now, all being well, I can go ahead and run the app. See if I screwed up somewhere along the way. It's looking promising. 
let's go ahead and give it a try. I'm going to say I want to wake up uh, every day nice and uh, late. <laughs> I wish I'll do 8 a.m. Uh, I like to sleep ideally eight hours, but I drink three cups of coffee a day. What time should I go to bed? And the answer is 11.10. There you go. So I need 50 more minutes of time in bed to reach my eight hours of good sleep. If I drink four cups, it's now going to be another uh, few minutes earlier. If I drink eight cups, it's super early now to get good that night's sleep. Let's do, I want uh, nine hours sleep. Whew, 9 p.m. Definitely drink less coffee. So the result is it works. It doesn't look great, but it works.